Hi there, welcome to this Alchemist Chemistry video looking at mass spectra. This will be the first in a series of videos looking at how to interpret mass spectra at A level. This particular example is going to look at the alkane butane. So initially I want to talk to you about the first step in the mass spectrometry process known as ionization. In the ionization stage, a gaseous sample of your molecules is bombarded by a stream of high energy high speed electrons from an electron gun. Now, this is my high-speed electron whizzing towards my molecule of butane. And what happens is, when that high-speed electron strikes the molecule of butane, it's possible that it can cause it to lose an electron from its own structure. It basically knocks off an electron from a carbon atom on this butane molecule. Now, that will leave that carbon atom with a single unpaired electron and an overall positive charge because it has lost a one negative electron. At this point, the positively charged ions will then pass through the rest of the mass spectrometry process. That would be acceleration, either deflection or time of flight, and then they'd hit the detector. Now, because this is a positively charged molecule, when it strikes the metal of the end of the mass spectrometer, known as the detector, it will generate a small electrical current as electrons move from the metal plate onto the positively charged ion. That electrical current is then registered and produces a peak on the mass spectrum. The greater the number of positive ions striking the detector at that particular mass charge ratio, that particular mass value, the greater the size of the peak on the mass spectrum and the greater the proportion of that particular size of molecule present. So if this is all true, it would stand to reason that we'd expect to get a very clear peak at a mass charge ratio of 58 for a gaseous sample of positively charged butane ions because the relative mass of a butane molecule is 58. 12 times four for the four carbons, plus one times 10 for the 10 hydrogens. So if those positive butane molecules are striking the detector, producing our peak, then we'd expect the um, identity of the molecule to be butane um, because it has that mass charge ratio. It's those positively charged butane molecules, which are also radicals simultaneously hitting the detector and producing our peak at 58. If only it were that simple. But when we come back to our spectrum, we can see there's a lot more going on here than just that peak at 58. We actually have other peaks at mass charge ratio 43, 29, 15, and even a small peak of 59, implying that there are species in this mass spectrometer that have uh, relative masses of 43, 29, 15, and even 59, respectively. So we need to think about what's going on there a little bit later on. Something called fragmentation is taking place. But first of all, I want to talk to you about how to identify what is known as the molecular iron peak, which in this case would have been for the mass of butane. Right, so when presented with a novel mass spectrum, you always want to try and find what is known as the molecular iron peak. That is the peak on the mass spectrum that corresponds with the molecular mass of the entire molecule before it's been allowed to fragment. That will always be the peak at the highest mass charge ratio that is still a prominent peak, still has a good height to it. So looking at this mass spectrum here, it appears to be 58 would be my molecular iron peak because 58 is at the highest mass charge ratio, has the highest relative mass of the various pieces of molecule, but it's still a prominent peak with a good height. The nine is not the molecular iron peak, it's something else we'll talk about later because it's very, very small compared to all the other peaks and therefore it cannot be representing the molecular iron because the molecular iron should have quite a high proportion um, in terms of what is present in the mass spectrometry readout because quite a lot of the molecules hitting the detector will be the unfragmented whole molecule itself. So for good measure, we have now labeled our molecular iron peak at mass charge ratio 58, and we've labeled it as a molecular iron itself, butane with a positive charge and also as a radical due to the fact that these butane molecules have had one electron knocked off, making them positively charged ions, but also at the same time, radicals. I'd now like to talk about where the rest of these peaks are coming from. It's a process known as fragmentation, bombarding a molecule with high speed, high energy electrons and knocking off electrons at various points along the chain, forming positive charges can lead to bond breaking or bond lysis or bond fission because electrons will move from covalent bonds to the positive charges formed to try and remove them. Now this can cause the molecule to fragment and break apart. And in doing so, some of those fragments or pieces ejected are actually themselves 
positively charged, positively charged ions. Now those fragments of molecules with positive charges can strike the detector in our mass spectrometer, leading to the generation of a peak on the mass spectrum itself. It's where I come to the picture with the scissors cutting through the molecule. These are the points along a butane molecule where those fragmentations can take place, where those breaks can take place, forming positive ions with smaller masses than the mass of the whole molecule itself. And we're going to look at each of those possible fragmentations, what piece of molecule possesses the positive charge and therefore is responsible for our peaks at mass charge ratio 15, 29 and 43 respectively. So first of all, let's consider what's responsible for that peak at mass charge ratio 15. Well, thinking about it, if our molecular ions are fragmenting, if they break apart into CH3 positively charged pieces and CH2, CH2, CH3 radical pieces, only the CH3 positively charged ions will be striking the detector and producing that current and therefore producing the peak on our mass spectrum. So it's those CH3 plus ions that are responsible for that peak of good size at the mass charge ratio of 15. And this is a representation of an equation showing that fragmentation. The molecular ion itself, the butane molecular ion with its positive charge and radical, fragmenting to form a CH3 positive ion, which will create our peak, and a CH2, CH2, CH3 radical, which will not generate a peak because it is not positively, positively charged. At this point, you might well see where we're going with this. So what I'm suggesting is maybe write down what you think the identity of the ion producing the peak at mass charge ratio 29 could be. Pause the video and then wait for the reveal in a few seconds and see if you've got it right and you've preempted the next question. So my hope here is that you might have thought of the same solution as I did for this 29 sized peak. That would be caused by the fragmentation of our butane molecular ion into equal portions of CH3CH2, but one of those CH3CH2 fragments would be the ion with the positive charge and the other would be the radical without the positive charge and only the one with the positive charge would be able to generate our peak on the mass spectrum at mass charge 29. So it's an ethyl or CH3, CH2 positively charged fragment, which is producing a prominent peak at 29, quite a common fragmentation, creating quite a high peak on our mass spectrum. Let's just push this one more step forwards. This time when you pause the video, try and write the full equation that represents the fragmentation, which would produce our very prominent peak at a mass charge ratio of 43. Once you think you've got it, unpause the video and check to see how you've done. Well done for giving that a go. Let's see how you did. I think the best solution would be that the molecular ion fragments and in doing so reduces two different fragments. One is a CH3, CH2, CH2 positively charged ion and the other is a CH3 radical and it's the CH3, CH2, CH2 positively charged ion which is going to be hitting the detector and producing our peak at a mass charge ratio and therefore a relative mass of 43. And it appears to be the case that this is the singular most common fragmentation of the butane molecule, so common in fact that it outnumbers both the molecule itself and other fragments in terms of how often it's hitting the detector, producing the highest relative, relative intensity peak on our mass spectrum itself. Okay, just before I satiate your curiosity about what on earth this 59 peak is all about, just wanted to say, if you find this video useful, please think about giving it a like. You could even subscribe to the channel or even ring the bell to keep notified of our latest content. I try and put out videos on a weekly basis. And you could even share this content or other content on the channel with friends studying chemistry and spread the name of chemistry as widely as possible. That is hugely appreciated. And your support, as always, is a massive boost to motivate me to keep making videos on a weekly basis. So thanks again, and let's find out what this is all about. So on any mass spectrum, if you find a tiny peak, one mass charge ratio value greater than your molecular ion peak you've already worked out, that is being caused by the presence of carbon isotopes. In terms of the natural abundances of carbon atoms found here on planet Earth, 
98.9% .9 of all the carbon atoms you will find will be carbon-12. Their nucleus will contain six protons and six neutrons. But around about 1.1% of all the carbon atoms found on planet Earth are carbon-13, with six protons and seven neutrons found in their nucleus. Incredibly, this natural abundance is reflected in the mass spectra of organic molecules because that tiny little peak of 59 is reflecting the 1.1% abundance of carbon-13 atoms found within molecules like butane, for example. And it cannot be ignored because it is prevalent and it is present enough to make a very tiny impression on the mass spectrum readout and produce a tiny peak, one mass value greater than the molecular ion peak itself, reflecting the presence of carbon-13 rather than carbon-12 atoms in a small proportion of butane molecules, for example, about 1.1% of the molecules. How cool is that? Right, folks, that brings this initial video on interpreting mass spectra to a close. Hopefully that'll help you interpret some mass spectra for some alkanes. Do check out future videos. I think the next one's gonna be on halo alkanes, a useful one because it again has this isotopic idea embedded into that topic. Um, I hope you found this useful. As always, thanks so much for listening. It is hugely appreciated. And I look forward to talking to you in the next Alchemist Chemistry video. Take care. Bye now.